Welcome to this module on conflict management, friends. Today I'll take you to the journey of what is conflict, the various aspects of conflict, and how conflict is an integral part of our life. I'm sure all of you agree that conflict is something which is unavoidable. Try as much we may to avoid conflicts. All of us would agree that conflicts anyway keep coming up. We'll try and explore how this particular aspect of our life is affecting us on a day to day basis. We'll also try and explore and try to understand what we could do about it. And finally, we'll try to see whether there are any coping methods, any methods by which conflicts can be coped up with. So let's start off with a journey of how to understand what is a conflict. So let me get on with the very first introduction to the whole thing. Let's try and define and understand what is a conflict. A conflict is nothing but it's a difference of opinion between two or more people. A conflict is nothing but a difference of opinion between two or more people which results in certain type of a discomfort to either of them or both of them. I repeat, it's a type of a discomfort with either of them or both of them experience. Why? It happens because somewhere I am perceiving things differently. Okay? Are conflicts real? Or are they imaginary? That's the next question. The answer is, it's real for the person who's going through the conflict. It's imaginary for the person who does not see the point of view of the person who's going through the conflict. So what are we trying to ask ourselves? We are trying to ask ourselves a question, what is it that I can do to make me handle conflicts? Is conflict an integral part of life? Yes. We as social beings, we as social creatures, whether we like it or not, whether we want it or not, we deal with people. And all of you will agree that when we deal with people, we have differences. I may like strawberry ice cream for example. A close friend of mine may not like strawberry ice cream, he may go for vanilla. It's quite possible. Now this appears to be so trivial, but I'm sure all of you will agree that time and again when I meet this friend of mine, I will try to convert him into eating strawberry ice cream. Don't we influence others to do things which we like to do? And when I find that my friend is not getting influence, I get put off and when I get put off, I start feeling irritated. The irritation may not show initially and I'll try every means to ensure that my friend goes in for the strawberry ice cream and switches over from vanilla. I'm giving you a very simple example. This is a very simple scenario wherein we are trying to change people all the time. One of the indications of a conflict is when you are trying to change people. You want people to be like you. Each one of us wants others to be like us. You know why? We want others to be like us because we want to feel comfortable with them. We all have what is called as comfort zone. And this comfort zone is what makes us not want a conflict. Tell me one thing friends, do you really feel that you want a conflict? Does any one of us want a conflict? No. But conflict happens. Why? Because people have got different points of view. My point of view, your point of view may be different. When the point of view is different, it starts off with a disagreement. The disagreement could result in an argument. The argument in turn can become heated. And then the heated argument could result into something very, very disastrous. Am I giving you a very bad picture of conflict? If this is the case, then what should we do about conflicts? That's a question. Are conflicts avoidable? 
No, they are not avoidable. As long as we are dealing with people all the time, as long as we are interacting with people, there are bound to be conflicts. There's going to be difference of opinion between what I say and what you say. There will be a difference of habits between what I do and you do. And this is bound to create conflicts. You know why we get conflicts? We get conflicts because we feel threatened with our comfort zones. When I say that I like strawberry ice cream, I am comfortable with the strawberry ice cream. I have a comfort zone. When you say that vanilla is better or I like vanilla, within me unknowingly, instinctively, I experience a threat. The key word is threat. When your opinion is different from mine, I experience a threat. This threat, friends, is so subtle it's not really blatant. I don't, I cannot even imagine that it's happening to me. This threat is an integral part of every organism, every human being. And this threat instinctively tells me to re-establish my comfort zone. Okay, I have a comfort zone. Somebody is trying to say that my comfort zone is not good, his comfort zone is better. Now when somebody says this, what do I do? I try to protect my comfort zone. Okay, when I try to protect my comfort zone, what do I do? I try to argue it out with him, saying that no. What am I doing? I am developing a behavior. A conflict is a form of a behavior that comes into play when the comfort zone of A is disturbed. When the comfort zone of A is disturbed, what happens? He tries to re-establish the comfort zone. Imagine a comfort zone of one square meters. That one square meters comfort zone is getting shrunk slightly. There's a discomfort, right? So what do we do? We try to bring it back to one square meter. How do we do? By a behavior. This behavior is conflict in this case. Whenever we go through any discomfort, I'm sure all of you will agree, what do we do? We try to regain our comfort by getting into a behavior.